Straight ahead on CCX News, a vote to address an overcrowding issue in the Anoka Hennepin School District. It will impact two local elementary schools. Plus, spicing up the local restaurant scene. I cook from within, I cook from like, um, from the heart. The inspiration behind a new Golden Valley restaurant. But first, road construction season not over yet. The local project that will cause delays. CCX News starts right now. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. Get ready for another road project on a major highway here in the Northwest Metro. This one is in Maple Grove where Eric Nelson joins us now to tell us more about it. Hi Eric. How you doing Shannon? And you know what? We are officially into fall, but guess what? Road construction season continues. MnDOT is now putting in a concrete median barrier on Highway 610 between the east and westbound lanes right behind me. Now the project started at 9 a.m. this morning and it will run through late October. We are going to be one lane in the eastbound direction from Interstate 94 to Elm Creek Boulevard. And part of the reason for that is safety. We don't want to come off of the interstate a single lane, go to two lanes, and then pinch everybody down to a single lane before we get to the tunnel. The location of this work zone is the segment of 610 over County Road 81 and the railroad tracks. MnDOT says this is a safety issue and the median will prevent drivers from crossing into the opposing lanes of traffic. The concrete barrier was supposed to be part of the 610 freeway when it opened. MnDOT calls this a semi-major project and wants commuters to brace for some traffic jams in the coming weeks. I think the first few days we're going to see quite a bit of delay out here until people get adjusted and use alternate routes. When you look at a third rule, about a third of the traffic simply disappears. They decide not to travel during that time frame. A third of the traffic uses a different route and a third of the traffic continues on that route. Now some possible detours for drivers who normally drive on Minnesota Highway 610 toward the east are take I-94 East or U.S. Highway 10 East. MnDOT also says no more future projects are planned for State Highway 610. Reporting live from Maple Grove, I'm Eric Nelson for CCX News. Now let's go back to Shannon. We get a break. Thank you, Eric. Police say a vehicle theft in Crystal turned into a deadly crash in Minneapolis. That crash killed three innocent people early Sunday near Matt's Bar in South Minneapolis. Police say the driver of a stolen SUV was an 18-year-old Minneapolis man. Four teenagers were in the SUV with him. According to Crystal Police, the theft happened in an area off 59th Avenue North in Crystal. The Anoka Hennepin School Board is set to vote on boundary changes that could greatly impact students in both Brooklyn Park and Brooklyn Center. There is overcrowding at Monroe Elementary in Brooklyn Park, but there's room to grow at Evergreen Park World Cultures Community School in Brooklyn Center. To fix that, the board is considering two options. The first one involves shifting some students from Monroe to Evergreen Park. The second choice involves duplicating the STEM program at Monroe at Evergreen Park with hope of attracting more students to the Brooklyn Center School. Monroe is currently at about 600 students and it was designed for that so it's very full and there's students that are trying to get into that school so our hope would be that we could shift the focus to Evergreen Park and get more students there. Middle and high school boundaries are not proposed to change for that area. The school board makes its final decision Monday night and is leaning toward creating a STEM program at Monroe Elementary. Three Rivers Park District and the City of Brooklyn Park now have a master plan for the recently renamed Mississippi Gateway Regional Park. The proposed destination park will combine Coon Rapids Dam Regional Park and the Brooklyn Park Environmental Nature Center into one regional park facility. Three Rivers Park District and the City of Brooklyn Park have been working on this plan for around six years. They surveyed several community groups and citizens to come up with this, the final plan. It's going to have two main focus areas. Closer to the dam, we'll have more of our traditional activities. Um, it'll have a new beginner uh, cross-country ski trail, a new nature center, and a wide variety of things. Down south will still be that nature experience that people really enjoy. The plan will also make the Mississippi River the heart of the park. The project is expected to cost the Three Rivers Park District $21 million, while the City of Brooklyn Park will contribute $5 million. Once funding is secured, construction will begin.
Saturday saw the Palmer Lake VFW second annual Veteran Suicide Awareness 5K in Brooklyn Park. This year, 145 runners signed up. That's triple last year's numbers. And they raised more than $9,000 for 23rd Veteran. That's a Duluth-based group that helps combat veterans re-enter civilian life. It's a tough transition that some veterans have trouble coping with. 23rd Veteran founder Mike Waldron knows that all too well from his own experience coming back home after participating in the 2003 invasion of Iraq. For about five years, I felt like I was dying every day and, and life was really difficult right, for me to live. So I am one of these veterans that went through the struggles of combat stress and I was able to find a way out. Money raised at the 5K will go towards sending Minneapolis veterans to a 23rd veteran session in October, and they say they still have open seats. If you'd like to go, or if you'd like to donate to the cause, go to 23rdveteran.org. This week is Diaper Need Awareness Week. It's a call to action to help with a need that often gets overlooked. No government assistance can be used for diapers, which hits struggling families hard. That's why local businesses like Acorn Mini Storage are partnering with the Diaper Bank of Minnesota and Robbinsdale based Helping Us Grow to help fill the need. It's not just the poorest of the poor, it's even middle class families. Um, and I think that's where that's what really tugs um, at my heartstrings. Um, you know, you just, you hear stories of um, reusing diapers, um, and unfortunately, if diapers aren't changed frequently enough, there can be infection, um, and a lot of that's preventable by just having adequate diaper supply. If you would like to donate, you can do so at the Acorn Storage Units in Brooklyn Park and in Champlin. Still ahead, spicing up the Golden Valley restaurant scene. That story is next in Business Matters. Plus, local runners compete at one of the state's biggest cross-country meets. But first, break out the light jackets. Temperatures barely reach 60 on Tuesday. It didn't take long for word to spread about a new Golden Valley restaurant. Lat 14 opened this past week at the site of a former Perkins off Highway 55, adding a little extra spice to the local restaurant scene. In this week's Business Matters, we sent producer Corey Bork to check it out. It's in a small suburb that doesn't have as many, of, as many restaurants and, and then also ethnic restaurants. They say variety is the spice of life. In Golden Valley, that spice was a long time coming. I felt that the, the Minnesota audience, the Minnesota palate, is ready for these stronger flavors of Laos and of Cambodia. Owner Anna Med started Lat 14 along with her husband. She says their decision to open a restaurant in Golden Valley sort of happened by accident. We drove past this on our errands or whatnot, and he said, you know, did you notice that this Perkins is up for sale? And I was like, well, this is a great location. Ann says the time was right to start a new restaurant venture. You may be familiar with her other restaurant in Brooklyn Park, Lemongrass Thai. With finally Lemongrass being able to kind of be on its own, it's like it wasn't a baby anymore, it's been 13 years, that gave me the confidence of like, okay, now I can really do something that um, I felt was a little bit outside of the box. Outside of the box in the form of different flavors. This one here is our Kanomchi Nampus. Not common with other local restaurants. This is just a small sampling of the foods you'll find here at Lat 14, like this pineapple fried rice, the coconut noodles, and this lovely papaya salad. All the flavors influenced by countries along the 14th parallel, countries like Laos, Thailand, and the Philippines. And the flavors? Wonderful. Anne was born in Laos and immigrated to the United States with her family at age four. For her cooking influence, look no farther than the people close to her heart. Going back to where all of this passion for food came from, and that's basically cooking alongside my grandmother, cooking alongside my mom. After you step inside Lat 14, if you feel like your extended family, well, there's reason for that. The heart of the home is in the kitchen, and that's basically kind of like the same feel that I wanted in, the, in a restaurant. And as a fan of all different kinds of foods, Anne says don't be afraid to step outside your comfort zone. Here in Minnesota, we don't lack diversity, and there's no reason for us to ignore it. So we should em embrace each other's diversity. And the key thing is through food. Food brings people together. For Business Matters, Corey Bork, CCX News. And Anne is definitely one busy chef. She's also the mother of four-year-old twins, whom she says prepared her for the juggling act of running a second restaurant. And as for Lat 14, it's open for dinner right now, but look for the restaurant to begin serving lunch starting October 1st. 
Still ahead, this year's local parade season wraps up with a big crowd and a nice parade to match. But first, the first class of the Maple Grove Crimson Hall of Fame is honored. Jay Wilcox is in next. I'm Jay Wilcox with sports. Maple Grove High School opened in the fall of 1996, and the school this year started a Sports and Activities Hall of Fame. The five-person first Hall of Fame class was recognized at halftime of the Crimson football game Friday and includes Craig Hansen, the school's first football coach, who led the Crimson to three state playoff appearances. Chad Morse, who was Minnesota's Mr. Soccer as a senior and led the Crimson to a state runner-up finish that fall. Tia Battle Osai, a basketball standout, who was a first-team All-State pick and Minnesota Gatorade Player of the Year as a senior and played collegiately at Vanderbilt. C.J. Woodrow, a standout baseball pitcher for the Crimson and later at the University of Minnesota, was also a great quarterback in high school. And Sonia Tengblad, whose parents accepted her award on her behalf. She was a standout in the music department and theater. Here's what three Hall of Famers had to say. I'm thrilled. It's, it's a tremendous honor because uh, it, was, it was such a blessing to work with so many great staff and so many great kids uh, coming through the school system for all those years. It's such an incredible honor. I still am pinching myself that this is just real and happening, but um, you just never would have thought all those years ago when you suited up for Maple Grove and we were a new school and just kind of getting started out that, you know, so many 20 plus years later, this is where we'd be. So It's a great honor. Um, didn't expect it. Uh, great class, here with a lot of different really great people, Coach Hanson and Chad and Tia and uh, Sony obviously couldn't make it, but really a cool honor and the inaugural class in front of here is really cool. While the Hall of Fame ceremony was a highlight, the Crimson football team had a rough night. They hosted Burnsville before a big crowd on homecoming. Burnsville makes a big play early as Marcus Shepley steps in front of the Crimson receiver to pick it off and he returns it inside the 10 yard line. And it sets up a play action pass as Sam Bardwell throws to Shepley for the touchdown. They missed the extra point and it's 6-0 and it's 9-0 Blaze at halftime. Third quarter and Bardwell looks for Shepley and hits him again. This time a 36-yard touchdown. Burnsville's lead grows to 15-0. Crimson standout running back Evan Hall is held somewhat in check for much of the game, but he does break free for a 51-yard touchdown, and this run makes Hall the all-time leading rusher in Crimson history. But it's a little too little too late as Burnsville wins 17-7. It's bittersweet for Hall, but he's excited to pass Ethan Magstad and Isaac Collins on the Crimson list. You know, those are the guys that I used to watch, you know, as a youth, as a youth football player, you know, looking up to those guys. So being right up there with them and now like taking a seat right next to them, it's, 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 um, it's an honor for sure. The Wyzetta football team looked for a big win against a longtime nemesis when they hosted Eden Prairie. Eden Prairie scores first, but Wyzetta answers as Keaton Heidi launches it downfield to Connor Hale right on the money, a 55-yard touchdown at 7-7. The Eagles score two unanswered touchdowns. In the third quarter, Colin Penn gets loose here on the reverse, and he is gone for a 21-7 EP lead. Wyzetta comes right back, though. A big special teams play puts the Trojans on the 13-yard line. Heidi throwing to Jacob Wildermuth, tying the score at 21. After another Eden Prairie touchdown, Wyzetta levels it again when Christian Vassar zigzags his way in for a touchdown 28-all. The Eagles run the reverse again, and Penn takes it for another touchdown, putting Eden Prairie up 35-28 with under a minute left in the game. But Wyzetta's not done. On the ensuing kickoff, Keegan Nickel finds a seam up the middle, and he takes it across midfield on a 50-yard return. Wyzetta capitalizes as Heidi fires to Joe Demro for the score, cutting the lead to 35-34, but the Trojans go for two and are stopped. Eden Prairie wins by a point. One of the biggest cross-country meets in the state was held on Saturday. They're off and running at the Malacca Mega Meet, featuring four girls and four boys varsity divisions. In the Division Three girls, Blake's Molly Liston is seventh. Her team places sixth. D2 boys on the outside in the red. It's Benilde's Peter Lynch. He's tenth. His teammate Aiden Lupke is 15th. They helped the Red Knights to eighth place as a team. To the biggest schools in Division I and junior Emma Atkinson of Wyzetta rolls to the win in a time of 
Her teammate Caroline Sasson is third. The Trojans win the team title easily. Two Division I boys, Max Manley of Edina, rolls to the victory, as do the Hornets as a team. The top local runner in gray, Eli Haft of Hopkins in 10th place. And in orange, McKinnon Makoro of Osseo, pretty tired as he hits the finish line 21st. Maple Grove, C.J. Young edges Ben Aoki Sherwood of Armstrong for 25th. And in the Division IV girls race, Riley Nekanicki of Providence's 20th helping the Lions to second as a team. That's all for sports. Shannon, back to you. All right, thank you, Jay. In local vote 2018, House District 45B covers parts of Crystal, Robbinsdale, and Golden Valley. DFLer Mike Freiberg is up for re-election against Republican Steve Merriman. I'm Representative Mike Freiberg, and it's been an honor to represent you for the past six years in the Minnesota House of Representatives. The last couple years have been somewhat frustrating, with the legislature focused on the wrong priorities and passing bills through bad processes like 1,000-page-long omnibus bills. In spite of the legislature's failings, I've been able to deliver results for our part of the Northwest Metro, including funding for flood relief and the New Hope swimming pool. If re-elected, I will work to give our schools the resources they need to thrive, improve and expand transportation options, including mass transit, and work to improve governance at the legislature. I hope you'll consider supporting me, Mike Freiberg, on November 6th. My name is Steve Merriman, and I'm running for the Minnesota House. My goal is to pass legislation that is beneficial to voters in District 45B. We need to provide adequate funding for education that will give students the skills needed to participate in our highly technical world. We also need to move as a state and individually to protect our environment. I will work to keep a lid on taxes while continuing to fund needed programs. I've been a resident of Golden Valley for over 37 years, and we graduated from the University of Minnesota, and served this country as a naval officer and Vietnam veteran. I'm a registered professional engineer and recently retired from a career in telecommunications. I'm running for office to bring your voice to the Minnesota House and would much appreciate your vote on November 6th. Up next, cheers and smiles through the streets of Plymouth. You couldn't have asked for better weather than at the Plymouth Parade this past weekend where there was a big turnout. Here are our two winners from this I'm a CCX Media Fan contest. Now these winners grabbed a CCX Media Fan, snapped a selfie, and texted, us, texted it into us and they won a CCX Media prize pack for it. So congrats go out to you. And we will leave you today with the sights and a few of the sounds of Plymouth on Parade. Here's the band from Armstrong High School. Have a great start to your work week, and we will see you right back here on Tuesday, starting at 4 o'clock.